Barack Obama yesterday announced to the country his first nominee to the Supreme Court, Sonia Sotomayor. Now, what Obama and the Democrats are now furiously trying to do is they are now trying to establish the fact that this judge is a moderate, they claim, somebody who is within the mainstream and the middle in terms of judicial philosophy. She is somebody who they are arguing demonstrates not only legal acumen and somebody with a profound judicial mind, but as Obama himself said, she demonstrates the empathy, the compassion, and the personal experience to become the next Supreme Court justice. Now, my friends, let's be very clear about this. I sympathize with Sonia, Sonia Sotomayor. I really do. I am a somebody who comes from a family of immigrants. I know what it is like to achieve the American dream, to come from hardship, to come from a working class background. The fact that this woman came from a single mother who obviously worked extremely hard to put her through school, somebody who worked hard, went to Princeton, went to Yale Law School, and made something of herself. She is a walking embodiment of the American dream. But that is not the issue here. The issue is not whether an immigrant woman or a woman who's the child of immigrants, of Puerto Rican descent, whether her life story is compelling enough for her to be the justice on the Supreme Court. Yes, it's heartwarming to see somebody do well from difficult circumstances. But does that justify the fact that now she has the qualifications to be the next Supreme Court justice? And what I believe... And what many conservatives now across the country are saying loudly and clearly is that clearly, if you look at her record, if you look, in fact, at some of her rulings, if you look at her character, and most importantly, if you look at her radical socialist worldview, she is not fit to be the next justice on the high court. She is not fit to sit among the other eight justices currently on the Supreme Court. And here is the reason why. This is a woman who has been steeped throughout her entire career in radical identity politics. She is at her core a milk toast Marxist. She is somebody who consistently, ruling after ruling, has been radically pro environment, has been pro affirmative action, has literally been a mouthpiece for the trial lawyers. And to me, what is most disgusting and what is most disheartening and most threatening to the future of this country is she is a person who places her Hispanic heritage, her race and her gender above her American identity. What she said as follows in a speech at Berkeley, California, which naturally it had to be in Berkeley, California, because frankly, that's where all the left wing crazies are. In 2001, she said in Berkeley, California, and this speech was then reprinted in the Berkeley Law Journal of La Raza. She said, and I quote, Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, has often been cited as saying that a wise old man and a wise old woman will reach the same conclusion in deciding cases. I am not so sure that I agree with the statement, Sonia Mayor said. First, there can never be a universal definition of wise. Second, I would hope that a wise Latina woman with the richness of her experiences would more often than not reach a better conclusion than a white male who hasn't lived that life. Now, my friends, there's no other way to say it. She is a racist. She is, at her core, a liberal fascist. She is somebody who puts blood and race and identity and gender above her American identity. She puts that above her judicial temperament. She is somebody that is saying, essentially, that she, as a Latino woman, can reach better conclusions than a white male. Now, this quote I'm sure you've heard quite often over the last day and a half. But what you haven't heard was that later on she said this, and this is classic racialism. Literally, you can take it out of Mein Kampf, except put in Latino and woman instead of Aryan or German. She said that if you look at blacks, if you look at Latinos, if you even look at women or Asians, that their logic and their reasoning 
is inherently different because, as she put it, of their physiological and cultural differences. In other words, their culture, their physiology, their racial identity and gender identity trumps everything else and it determines and defines who they are as human beings. This is cultural Marxism at its very worst. This is liberal fascism. This is an attempt now by the radical left to subvert the American Constitution, to say that precedent, to say that what's written in the law, what's actually written in the Constitution, that does not matter, or that takes a back seat. What truly matters is one's personal experiences, that she comes from a Puerto Rican family, that she's of Hispanic descent, that she's a woman, that she comes from a single mom, that she knew poverty, that she grew up in the Bronx near Yankee Stadium. That's more important than her legal mind or than logic or than reasoning or than what's in fact written in the law. And this, my friends, flies against 200 years of legal history in this country. This is an attempt by the radical left to literally impose identity politics upon the United States. And I am not surprised that Barack Obama chose her. Because if you looked at his campaign for the presidency in 2008, what did he do but play the race card? What did he do but play the victim card? He kept saying again and again, one of the major reasons why he should be elected president of the United States was because he was African American, was because of his biography, was because of his life story. And he hid the fact that he was a stealth socialist, that underneath, beyond the supposed moderation and pragmatism, that underneath he was a hard-boiled transnational socialist whose objective and goal ever since he got into the White House, has been to transform the United States into a European nanny state. And my friends, make no mistake about it. I have been in Washington now for over 10 years. I have covered politics for nearly 20 years. I have seen many people come and go in this city, including Bill and Hillary Clinton. And let me say this about the Clintons. They were gangsters through and through. And they were also radical left-wingers. But I have never seen anybody with the ambition, the arrogance, and the hubris of Barack Hussein Obama. He is not President Obama. He truly is Comrade Obama. He is somebody who, if you look at him piece by piece, is implementing a sweeping socialist revolution. And Sonia Mayor is a central pillar of that socialist revolution. This is now part of the liberal onslaught on America. And what she represents is exactly the kind of identity politics that she and Barack Obama were steeped in when they were both in law school. This is part of the Marxist assault upon our legal traditions, upon our economic system, and ultimately upon our social life and our politics. She is somebody, I'll bet you dollars to donuts, will vote radically pro-choice. She will be a, a, a key vote on the Supreme Court to uphold Roe v. Wade. She will champion gay marriage. She will champion affirmative action. She will champion euthanasia. She will make sure that every one of Obama's initiatives, from nationalizing the health care industry, to giving amnesty to illegal immigrants, to nationalizing the automakers, to nationalizing the banks, to nationalizing the insurance sector, that every one of those measures will be protected and upholded in court. And most importantly, she will do what liberal justices have been itching to do for decades. She will use foreign countries as legal systems as justification for her rulings on the high court. She will look to France. She will look to Germany. She will look to China. And she will even look to the Middle East to justify her rulings on things like anti-terror policies, on Guantanamo, on how we can interrogate terrorists, right down the whole line. This is what they have been dreaming of for decades. Because at their core, what cultural Marxists like Sotomayor truly believe 
is that America is a racist, sexist, homophobic, and misogynist society. That we are an imperialist nation at heart. And that the world, not America, is better than we are. That we are not a force for good, but the world is. And this is exactly Barack Obama's ideology and worldview as well. Now, he in fact hinted that he was going to nominate